Well, it's a rainy, muddy, muggy day out in the old patch today, and I'm out in the middle of nowhere, a uh, kilometer 25 on the Nordic River Road, for those of you who have any clue where that is. And I thought, you know, this would be a perfect day to do a message for people who are feeling miserable. And so I'm going to title this one, uh, What to Do When You're Drowning in Fear and Troubles. Uh, maybe you're watching this because you saw the title and that's exactly where you're at. You're, you just, you're, you're surrounded by a situation. You don't know what to do. You feel like you're drowning. You see no way out. Maybe you're struggling financially. You don't know how you're going to pay those bills. Maybe you're uh, struggling in your marriage. Maybe your spouse doesn't love you anymore. Or maybe they're making your life a living hell. Uh, maybe you're battling with sickness and you don't know. Uh, you just can't get that breakthrough. Whatever it is, whatever you you're battling with, whatever seems to be pulling you under, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is with you, he's for you, and he wants to get you out of this. And if you'll partner with him, instead of numbing your pain with whatever you use to numb your pain, whether that be food or, or TV or booze or whatever, if you will stop numbing your pain with all that stuff, and if you will start pursuing him, I promise you, he can get you out of this situation. He can get you out of any situation. Scripture I want to share with you today is from uh, 2 Kings 6, 15 to 17. It's a story about Elisha and his servants, with, uh, a time when they got into a bit of a pickle. And this is what it says. You can read along with me. It says, When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I love that story. Uh, what you'll see in that passage is that there's two ways to respond to uh, a very, very ugly and difficult cir circumstances. You could be like the servant who just sees the trouble and goes, ah, we're dead. Uh, and that's where many of you are right now. You're in a situation, you see a problem, you don't see a solution, and you say, oh, I'm finished. Or you can be like Elisha and says, now look a little further, just step back, look at a bigger picture and you'll see that there's actually more with us than there are with them. I want to promise you something. God is bigger than the devil. There's more angels than there are demons. And if you belong to the Lord, uh, and if you're pursuing him, if you're saying yes, if you're going after God, there's more with you than there are against you. You know, I love this one scripture in uh, 2 Chronicles 20.15. And I'll never forget the, 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 the address because God gave me that word in 2015 and we were going through the worst recession ever. I didn't know what I was going to do. I felt like I was surrounded. And God gives me 2 Chronicles 2015, which says, Thus says the Lord to you. And some of you need to take this one today. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Chew on this one. Thus says the Lord to you. Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I want you to know if you're a child of God, your problem is his problem, and he knows how to solve any problem. Now, you might say, well, I got myself into this mess, Steve. I screwed up. I made a mistake. It's my own, it's my own fault. Okay, well, you're in the miry clay, and it's your fault. Okay, well, here you are. You're still a child of God. Or maybe you're in a mess and it's someone else's fault. Maybe you're in a mess and it's the devil's fault. Or it's just life happening. But the point is, you are in a mess and God is the God who gets you out of messes. That's what he does. He saves his kids. Even when they're dumb and they do stupid things, even when they, uh, whatever, God loves to be your savior. And you need a savior. Not just so you can get into heaven, He's your Savior even in this life. You know, Psalm 40, 1 to 3 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. I, he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. Some of you, that's where you are. I need to be lifted out. He said, He put a new song in my heart, a hymn of praise to our God. 
You know, God is the God who gets you out of ugly situations. And uh, I want to promise you, that's what he wants to do for you. You say, well, what do I do, Steve? How do I get out of this situation? How do I get out of fear? First thing, like the prophet says, don't be afraid. You've got to make a choice to reject fear. Now, you might not think you have the ability. You do. Fear is a choice. And you've got to choose to reject fear. Now, how I'll tell you, it's easier. It's easier to reject fear if you have a revelation that helps you crush that fear. Like for Elisha and the servant, he gave him a revelation. He said, there's more with us than there is with them. He even showed them. He was able to see it. Well, then suddenly he didn't. He wasn't afraid anymore. The problem was still there, but the problem got so small that the fear disappeared. The same thing is going to happen for you when you get a revelation from God. When you start meditating on scriptures, I encourage you, memorize scriptures like that one, 2 Chronicles 20.15 or others. Another one, Psalm 91.15. That's another great one. Uh, it says, I will be with you in trouble. <laughs> That's a word from God to somebody today. I will be with you in trouble. But you get a couple scriptures that, that, that promise you victory, chew on them, meditate on them, and suddenly the problem starts to look smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Your faith gets bigger, and then you get your breakthrough. But you don't get your breakthrough while you're still stuck in the mud of fear. You got to get out of this fear. You got to get out of that anxiety. You can't live in anxiety and fear and then expect to see miracles, signs, and wonders. No, you got to obey God and don't be afraid. You know, uh, just thinking of Joshua. Interesting. Joshua 1.8 comes right before Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1.9 says, don't be afraid. I command you, basically, don't be afraid. But Joshua 1.8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate uh, on it day and night. Isn't that interesting? First he says, meditate on the word of God day and night. And then he says, don't be afraid. And so if you're drowning, I said, what do you do if I'm drowning in fear? This is what you need to do. You need to start, well, first of all, stop medicating your pain with all of that other stuff. Don't run to TV. Don't run to food. Don't run to booze. Uh, you don't have room for that right now. What you need to do is eat the Word of God. Start meditating on the Word of God. Get a scripture burning in your heart. And you watch as you fill yourself with the Word of God. The, the fear, the anxiety begins to leave. And then you get your breakthrough. It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. This might take a week. Be patient. You know, Hebrews 6.12 says, uh, Through faith and patience faith and patience, we receive the promises. And so faith and patience, but get your faith up and be patient. And I promise you, God will get you out of this mess. That's what he does. He saves your butt. That is who he is in your life. And that's what he wants to do for you. I hope that's an encouragement for you. Uh, don't give up. Get in the word and keep trusting him. He knows those who trust in him. God bless you. We'll see you soon.